What's up duelers, it's Nerp here, and as you know, I've been playing a lot of Lion Art to rank up. Actually, I'm all the way at rank number 12 in the world in S rank right now, which is pretty surprising. But before I go any further, I want to give you guys different content than just Lion Art games. So I want to learn the other factions and get the rare cards for those factions to make competitive decks. I am sitting on 2600 gold from playing the past few weeks as well as uh, over 1400 spirit. I'm not sure how far that's going to go in crafting and getting the strong cards of the other factions to make competitive decks, but we'll see in this video because I'm going to go ahead and open 25 spirit orbs and I'll track the uh, rarities and the stats just for fun so uh, we can all see what I got. And I was considering buying the launch art the launch offer 10 orbs for $10, but I already have 2600, so 25 spirit orbs is a nice round number. So let's go ahead and buy the 25. And 25. So I do have one, I could afford one more spirit orb, but 25 is a nice round number. And I know that's not a ton of spirit orbs, and definitely it would make it for a cooler video with even more of these, but I'll just see my small sample size uh, stats for uh, drawing rares and stuff like that. So let's start it. I'll just go one by one here and look at each of the uh, contents. Um, so not so good here. We have five common cards and one rare card. Rare is not so rare. If it has the if it has a white, it's common. Blue, it's rare. Purple, it's epic, and orange is legendary. We want to get a lot of a lot of legendaries. Most of the commons and maybe uh, some of the rares I already have three of, and then they can be disenchanted for spirit. This pack, we have one epic card, Sivrel the Exile, which is a neutral card range. Minions damaged by Sivrel are pulled in front of him. That's interesting. On to our third orb. Not so good so far. I want to draw some legendaries. Nothing too special here. One rare and five commons. Um, nothing too special here. Three commons and two rares. Yeah. I don't really care about like the not the rares and commons because those are pretty cheap to craft anyways. So if I need them in a competitive deck, I can just craft those. I'm hoping to get useful uh, legendaries and epics in the competitive deck. So, so far, not having a lot of luck. Each of these uh. Each of these uh, packs I'm playing uh, are mostly commons and rares. This one does have one epic, Iridium Scale, your general game's frenzy. That could be useful. I'm not sure if that's in a lot of current line, uh, Magmar decks though. Um, another epic, Spear to the Wild. Reactivates friendly minions on your opponent's starting side of the battlefield. I've seen this card as like a gimmicky card in some some Vanar decks. It's good for getting a lot of damage in one turn, I think. Here we got... There we go. Two uh, legendaries in one pack. So on our... What? Seventh spirit orb? Seventh or eighth? We drew two legendaries. And an epic, so... Amazing pack. Has a spell jammer, which is going to be very useful actually, because I know this actually goes in definitely a, a competitive Vanar deck where you give every, all your units plus one, one, one from the Bloodborne spell. And this is also a very good legendary. I've seen it played against me many times, where you can play it and you also take control of an enemy uni uh, unit. 
and this is just a whatever card, Sun Sun Templar. But these two legendaries, not only are they legendaries and I'm lucky to pull them, but they're both uh, going to be useful to me. So I'm very happy about this pack. Best pack so far. I doubt I'm going to beat a pack like that the rest of the, the rest of the time. Getting more than two legendaries and an epic in a pack. This pack, yeah, just five commons and a rare. This pack has one epic Bone Reaper. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to all nearby enemy minions. Has provoke. Um, not sure if I see this too often. Maybe I've seen it before. Seems like an okay card. Um, here's a epic card, Aether Master. You can replace an additional card each turn. That's cool if I want to make a gimmicky replace base deck. I'm not sure. Uh, I hope I get uh, the specific cards that are useful so that I don't have to do a lot of disenchanting. Because obviously, the most efficient way to build a complete set is without disenchanting cards because you don't disenchant a card for uh, the same cost it uh, takes to craft it back. This is good. A uh, good pack. Two epics in one pack I think is good. Uh, a Skywind Glaives and a Rosh's Curse. Well, I think I may have already three Rosh's Curses, so that might just be good for Spirit. Yeah, the rarer, the higher the rarity of the card, the more Spirit you can dispel it for. And you can use Spirit to create, uh, to like basically buy new cards. Another Spell Jammer. Wonderful. Any, any orb with a, any Spirit Orb pack with a Legendary is a good pack. And another uh, legendary that I can use. Here is a Skywind Glaives. So that's another epic card. Um, nothing special here. We have. Another Dial Toss. I think I have three of those already. Um, another Wildfire Ankh. Definitely have three of those. Well, they're still good for uh, Disenchantment. I can just craft whatever cards I want. Nothing special here. Almost out of spirit orbs, but I'm pretty happy with so far what we've gotten. Oh, here, another uh, legendary card, Aspect of the Mountains. Vanar transform any minion into five-five seismic elemental. Deal five damage to enemy minions around it. Um, doesn't seem too good. I mean, it's kind of like a more expensive holy immolation, but in Vanar. You do get to turn into a 5-5, five five, which I guess is kind of cool. But I don't know if that's going to be disenchanting fodder or I can keep it. We'll see. But it's always good to get another legendary. So that's our fourth legendary of this 25-pack uh, drawing. Nothing special here. We're almost out, guys. Um, Sworn Avenger. He's kind of cool. A ranged unit who's epic. Yes! A very good pack here. We get an epic card and a legendary card. Black Locust. Flying after this minion moves, summon a Black Locust nearby. That is a cool card. I don't know if it's going to be um, that good in an actual competitive match because it only has two health and you need to survive for the next turn to really multiply and it will take a few turns to really fill the board with Black Locust but it's a cool card nonetheless and a legendary and a Frost Run Rhino, Infiltrate Kin, one attack and Celerity. And I just noticed actually my face cam is covering the picture of the top middle card. Um, sorry about that. Didn't uh, realize that until now. My face cam. We 
we have here a Captain Hank Hart. Is this like a supposed to be a like a joke card? Because not, it doesn't really fit in with the lore, like a spaceman. Well, regardless, it's an epic card with ranged, and he's kind of interesting. And my last pack, my last spirit orb. Pretty good. Two uh, epics in the pack. A dream gazer and a winter blade. Hmm. The numbers are in. So I drew a total of 125 cards because there's five cards in each spirit orb and I bought 25 spirit orbs. I tallied up the commons, rares, epics, and legendaries. I drew a total of 76 commons, which comes out to 60.8%. 28 rares, which comes out to 22.4%. 16 epics, which is 12.8% and five legendaries, which is 4%. So those are my percentages from my small sample size. Um, I don't think there's any official uh, pack probabilities that are, were released by the devs. I'm sure if you buy more like 100 packs, you'll have a closer um, result to the actual, uh, the actual probabilities on drawing certain rarities. But it's kind of fun still to check what I got with my 25 packs. So that'll be it for today. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Duelist content, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.